I'm gonna stop that right there just to mention that all of the sound that you heard was added in post. I added all different sound effects and I'm gonna show you how you can create your own sound environment. And this was by request of you guys in the community section on my channel. I asked you what video topic you guys wanted to see next and a whopping majority of you chose sound design. Uh, sorry to the iMovie users that would like me to do that tutorial, but maybe in the future. So let's go over this. Let me just show you this timeline. Let me see if I can press Command minus and just take a look at the sound design here. I have layers upon layers and uh, quite a bit actually going on in these. And we're gonna go over what I did to kind of tweak them so they fit the shot. And uh, we'll talk about all these layers as well. So let's listen to this first sequence. Uh, I'll go up until about that other gap clip. Do you remember him? Four years ago, a target we grabbed, simple sweep. Crazy chemist apparently, used to build chem bombs and sell them to the highest bidder. Why do you ask? About two days ago, he broke out. It's not based on a true story, <laughs> but uh, I knew that that would kind of pull some intrigue in, so I just added that in. When I am changing clips, I like to add some sound effect that punctuates that change. And so, for example, even just with something like this coming up, you just have this, this what is like a little riser. It's like a reverb riser. And then, for example, here, if I go down to this beginning clip, let's listen to this just part. Remember this him? Part right here. You can hear risers that allow for the transition from this black to the sand dunes to really pop. If I isolate these. Okay. And now without these, I'll press V to mute. Uh, also, I mapped my solo select, which allows me to just select that clip. Normally it's option S. I map mine to C, so it makes it really easy because I can do C to solo, and then I can do V to mute. It just makes sense to put it there. So let's listen to it without it. You remember him? Not nearly the same. So that's something you can do in your videos. If you want to add a little bit of kind of an audio transition, add some type of riser, or hit to transition from shot one to shot two. Something that's interesting about this shot is this was actually a daytime shot. <laughs> if I turn off these effects, <laughs> that's, uh, that's what it is normally. And then I wanted to make it nighttime so it matches with these because these are totally separate shots. So let's go down and I'll kind of go over these audio lanes here. If you don't know how to create or use audio lanes, here's how you do it. You select some sound effects and you can right click those sound effects and then you'll do assign audio roles. Here then you can select different roles and what I have done is created my own roles. So I, you click edit roles and then you have your full list here. I have a, a weird method where I, I call this Foley. It's, I mean, it's technically not really Foley, but what this symbolizes is a direct sound. So if someone punches someone, that goes in the Foley section because it's the main action that we're hearing. So this is usually louder. It's also usually up near the top of the primary storyline in our audio rolls. And then I have something called uh, ambience. And if I turn off everything but ambience, we'll turn off the music as well. Four years ago, a target we grabbed so all this is, is background noise. And it's so important to try and fill your audio environment with what you would naturally hear if you were in that situation. So this is a desert shot. You would definitely hear probably some wind. You would hear maybe a little bit of sand that's, that's coming across the top of these dunes. And this should be set at a lower level. Let me run through the rest of these. So we have my ambient sound effects. If you don't know what these three points are, this allows you to collapse every other audio roll except the ambient sound effects. And this one allows you to expand each different level within that audio roll. So you can add, uh, for example, like this is just the, the top sound effects roll, sound effects one, two, you can adjust those. And then this last one brings the, let me 
initiate these again. I'm sorry, the first one brings each roll down to their respective audio lane. So for example, you'll see how this one was at the top and it's also the, the in the effects section. And just by clicking this, all of them will go into their lanes. Uh, this last one is the effects section and this is really important like we just talked about. It's the risers, it's the hits, it's the drone sound that's in the background. I'll play out just this, just the effects. So let's turn this off. And you can hear kind of the importance of this because these are also so important to fill your audio environment. So we have a hit right there. Okay, we have our risers. That sucked out. Now we have, these are, none of these are, this isn't music. This is just drones that are at different frequencies and just kind of give an eerie vibe. And we have some it's like things like this, which is shimmer. Just add kind of a creepy, eerie, high-pitched noise. Uh, let me just play these drones here. Also adds that kind of suspicious vibe. And once again, we have also some accents to transition from one shot to the other. So if I just play these, Right, so that goes from this shot in the desert to him moving. Okay, so just that, just that uh, effects audio lane does a lot. It adds a nice bass layer. And like I mentioned, what, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that these start at a low level. If you can keep your, your audio clips around negative 10 or negative 12, and then you can raise the ones that you need to raise uh, because audio is additive. So if you're just constantly stacking audio clips, pretty soon you're gonna have levels that are peaking. And mine actually did peak in this video, but what I did was I then created a compound clip and then I think I adjusted it or added a limiter, but it's important to kind of start at a lower level. All right, so let's turn these on. Let's turn on the ambient sound effects, the dialogue and the Foley. And I'm just gonna go over the Foley because it's arguably the most important because you're literally constructing the audio environment with sound effects exactly how it would sound when you're there. And it, these are the sound effects that are heard the most. They're the, the walking sound effects. It's uh, someone holding the gun. It's these little adjustments that can help your audio blend with the video perfectly. So let me isolate just the Foley here. Simple sweep. Let me turn off the dialogue. So we have him stepping. I made sure to add multiple sound effects for all these people walking. So if I just do this and then I'll press that C shortcut that I made. All I did was I took sound effects of people walking in dirt and on gravel, and then I layered them at different times. So it sounds like they're all walking at the same time. Also, what I recommend you do, and I should have said this in the beginning, is you should change your project to have surround sound audio. This will allow you to adjust uh, your audio so it sounds like things are happening around you in your headphones. So what you would do for that is you click your project and you would go into your inspector window here. You would click modify. And then down here in audio, you don't change it to stereo because that's just gonna be left and right channels. You change it to surround. And once you do that, you'll see that you have six audio lanes that will pop up in your audio meters. And you can find those just by clicking here. This is something I found out by Matthew O'Brien, my, my buddy, the other Fonica Pro editor. I always thought you had to press Shift Command 8. Turns out you can just press this thing. So very cool tip. Thanks, Matthew. And the real benefit of changing the audio to surround sound is it allows you to use the pan mode. You can find this also in the inspector. And what this does, uh, like I mentioned, is allows you to adjust the position of different sounds. So for example, with this sneaker, I'm gonna raise this so we can hear it a little bit more. This was this, a sneaker I added for this guy that's really close here. So he's right here to the left. So what I did was you go into your pan mode, you click this and you'll see you have all these options for surround. Don't get too flustered because the only two really you need to remember are create space and ambience. And if you wanna learn the rest of them, I created a sound design, really in depth sound design tutorial. So I'll link that in the description. But for create space, it's something that you wanna animate in your scene to be in the forefront of your audio environment. So these guys are walking to this house 
So what I did was I made sure to adjust this sound effect so it's to the left here, since he's kind of to the left. And then I'll talk about how later on I use keyframes to adjust so it sounds like things are moving in your audio environment. So let's listen to this play out. Okay, so it sounds, it sounds okay, but it sounds a little weird, right, without everything else added. But then when I add everything else, the, this is the ambience as well as the effects, like those drones that we heard, here's what it sounds like. So it really makes a difference. And let's go back just into the Foley. So one of the things I love about creating sound design is how creative you can get with what sound effects you use. You can use a totally random sound effect that is not what is happening in the scene, and sometimes it'll, it'll sound fine. So for example, I know here that they're about to open this door. So what I did was I took a Beretta sound effect because to me it sounds like they're almost breaking off a lock. And then I also added that with things like this refrigerator door sound effect, right? That's a pretty solid one, as well as this open door interior. That's a simple, just someone opening a car door. And then also this wood that's crashing because obviously the door is made of wood. So you want to kind of, uh, you kind of want to get that in there. Right, that one's a kind of a stretch, but then you add them all together. Also, I added some gun rifle sounds. I didn't see that as well. So let me hit this and I will isolate these. <laughs> sounds pretty solid. Sounds pretty solid. Sounds just like they're busting open that door. And another thing I wanted to mention, we have this part here. So right here, we have the shot of him just in the house. So we know that we're not going to have the sound effects of them walking, playing as loudly. Also, what you can do is you can add different audio effects like muffled to effects that maybe uh, should be muted. Or for example, in this shot, he is in his house and outside you probably would hear someone walking up. And so that's what I did. I changed these sneaker in the dirt sound effects and just added the muffled audio effect on it. So here's what it sounds like. Okay, so it sounds like it's coming from outside. Taking a look at this shot, if you were in this situation, if you were right next to these guys, what sounds would you hear? You would hear the breaking down of the door. You probably would hear their clothing making noise. You would hear some footsteps, probably some background ambiance, which I have in. I'll go over that in a second. But for example, clothing is something that's often overlooked. That's pretty quiet, but him making that motion to open the door would cause for some sound to pop up. Like he's reaching for the door in that kind of heavy suit, you would assume that you would hear that. For example, this shot, you know he's in this house. He has this uh, boom box or stereo that's here. So what I did was added this just little music and put a cathedral sound effect over top. Something I should have done, if you look at the audio meters here, only the left and right channel are playing, and that's because this is just a stereo sound effect clip. What you can do to make this surround is you change the pan mode to create space, and that's automatically going to change it. So if I play this out, see? And so that'll hit all of the channels, left surround, left speaker, center, right speaker, and right surround. LFE is low frequency effect, I think. So that's kind of like a, a little bit of a bass. So we're gonna listen to the effects a little bit later in this. Crazy chemist apparently used to build chem bombs and sell them to the highest bidder. Why do you ask? About two days ago. So you'll notice you start to hear a riser here and that's just going to add some tension to the scene. If you don't know what a riser is, it's a sound effects that, that is continually building in noise and usually kind of pitch. And what you wanna do is you line that up with the end of your shot and that allows for punctuation at the end of that shot. And especially if it's pretty silent after that, it's gonna be kind of shocking when the, the riser stops. Something I did here was I have these drone strings and because I kind of wanted to uh, mimic this riser here, I did the same thing with these, these drone strings. And that just helps to accentuate that. So if I put these all together, Right, and then you have this, this uh, low bass hit. Now let's take a listen to this sequence here, and this is kind of the initial action sequence. 
It took two rounds. Alpha team. Okay, so I don't know if you heard in the beginning, you started to hear a riser. And if I turn off all of these, so really eerie. You hear the riser starting to build. And that's because we go from slow motion here to these dropping. And something I did was added this uh, bass sound effect to accentuate these shells dropping. And then of course, in the background, you have all those string tensions uh, that I mentioned earlier. Let's take a listen just to the ambient sound effects. So here what I did, because I didn't want this to be too loud, I changed it to, I added an underwater sound effect. This is very similar to muffled, but it's a little less uh, muffled. It, it kind you can kind of hear things, but it's kind of garbled a little bit. So if I just play this clip out. Right, and let's turn it off so you can hear what that sounds like without it. Huge difference, right, huge difference. And because we're not in the scene yet, I wanted to add this on so it's kind of like when people get shell-shocked in movies and everything else is kind of muted except that high-pitched tone, I wanted it to be similar to that. And then I also used those specific sound effects to uh, also help these shells dropping to help them hit a little bit more. So none of these are them shooting. These are all background sound effects. Let's play those direct sound effects first. Let me turn off the effects as well. So we have the casings dropping. This also was very important to add some type of sand because we see the sand in the shot, so we expect to hear some type of sand or grain. And so adding that really helped to sell it, even though that wouldn't make that noise, you know that. Nevertheless, it sells the shot. So let's turn that off. Pop on right there! Ah. Okay, you can tell what I mean by direct. Those are the sound effects that when we look at this shot, we know what they are uh, going to. I know some of you are probably screaming at the computer, where do you get these sound effects? A lot of them is, are from YouTube. There's a great site called SoundSnap, and that one is not free, that costs. And those, those two are mainly my go-to. YouTube is, number one, it's free. It has almost everything you need. And then those other sound effects that I need that are like specific and specialized, I will go to sound snap but there's lots of great places art list has its own sound effects that are fantastic as well envato elements has their own sound effects and i'd like to point out something here if i just isolate these clips you'll see what i mean by you can get creative with the sound effects that you use so this is him falling and instead of kind of making a th or finding a thud sound effect i found a sound effect that was a tree falling and this is something that i learned from brandon lee a sound effect that is not related to what's going on in the video will sound better at a low volume than the actual sound that would be happening at a higher volume. So let's, for example, play this out, just these two, because this is a tree falling. And you'll notice here that I actually changed the duration of my clip here. And you can do that by pressing Shift B, and that's gonna allow you to bring up your retime tool, and then you can just drag it out. But that will distort your audio. Oh, something that I left out actually is me making it ugh sound effect. <laughs> 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 Once again, adding things like dirt and sand and anything that you see going on in the shot is going to really help. Something else I want to bring up is that you can create kind of an audio match cut if you have a sound effect that uh, connects you from shot A to shot B. So here we have sand blasting, which this was an overlay that I added, and then it goes to the next shot. But this kind of acts as an audio transition in a way because you have this shot where the sand is blasting. It goes to this shot where the sand is blasting. And so having that audio kind of helps blend those together. Here's an example of how you can use hits in between your shots as like a way to accentuate the cut. So right here I added these, uh, I believe I got this off of Sound Snap, Glass Hollow Swoosh. The lesson here is to just find sound effects that ex accentuate cuts. It helps out a lot. Hell to Earth. 
everything you love. There's an, another example of me using sound effects that weren't related to the actual sound. This is just a ratchet noise that I found, I think, on YouTube. Sounds good. And then I just took that couple clicks, multiplied them, and you can do so by, well, you can do Command C and then Command V, or you can hold down Option and just start dragging. And whoops, I just lowered the volume. And, uh, and that will duplicate or copy the, the selected audio clip or video clip. So this is the last section, and I think you guys are gonna like this. If you've stayed with me for this long, thank you. Let's listen to this first, and then I'll go through what I did. So like I mentioned, if you look at your, your audio, my audio meters here, you'll notice that I peaked and way high too. I kind of started way too loud on a lot of sound effects and I didn't expect that I would layer it so much. So start lower. If you need to though, you can create a compound clip and then lower it from there. If I, we take a look at these clips, something that really helps when layering is adding a fade in and fade out for those audio clips. And that just helps ease the transition from one sound to the next or else it's gonna to be too abrupt and too hard. And so what you can do here is you take these little points and you can drag them out uh, once you do that, if you go over the clip, it'll turn white. So you can tell this one has not been selected, this one has. And then if you want to change the type of uh, fade, you just right click or control right click with the mouse here. And you have different options here. The higher it is, the louder it is. So this is gradual. This is a good option here. This is like really loud right out the gate and then obviously kind of quiet and then raises uh, loud at the end. So right here in the scene, what would you add? You would add sound effects that sound like them getting ready. So that would be clothing movement. You would add guns being loaded, suppressors being put on. And because there's multiple guys, you add more than one. And then once again, definitely go into your inspector and change the pan mode on the audio and adjust it here. Because if you have someone say like in this shot, who is kind of to the left of the frame and he's doing something, like I just made it so he's reloading. If I mute everything else but this, it sounds like it's coming from the left. And that's because I went in here, changed it to create space and moved it to the left. If he's moving across, as you would press the keyframe button, you would go to the point in the shot that he moved, say he moved across the frame, and then you would bring it over here. And so as we play this out, you're, you're, it sounds like he's going across. Good kill, good kill. Check it down to us. That's another tip for you. You can start your sound effect before that clip is shown. And that is called the J cut. That is hearing the sound before you see it. And so with this, we have this, the sound of the fighter jet playing almost the whole way through this clip. And that kind of primes you to get ready for seeing an airplane. It helps make these this straight cut between this man and the airplane much smoother. Good kill, good kill. Check it down to us. And I, I used a lot of different sound effects here. I used obviously uh, a jet fighter sound effect. I think this is in Final Cut, but I also used a jet pack sound effect and I thought that really worked. That was, I'm sorry, that was actually used for the missile. And then of course we have this, I think I got from YouTube. It's just the sound of the, the fighter jet. And then I also added radio chatter. Good kill, good kill. Take it down to us. That's it. If we go down to the ambient sound effects, you'll notice that a lot, I don't have a lot of ambient sound effects here, and that's because the music is so loud in this part that it would just get drowned out. So all I did here was add a little bit of background radio communication, and then I'll show you what I did in a second for this effect. Answer one, I'm sorry, two requests. Right there, I, I split the clip and then I added a cathedral effect here. And you can do this or you can do something that was mentioned on my buddy Dylan, the Final Cut Bro, his channel recently. If you press Shift H, that's gonna bring up your hold frame and then you add the cathedral to this. And then that would kind of uh, make Command C, Command Shift V, add cathedral and just listen to that. Here in the background, so that works too. So we have the riser, the hit, another riser. 
Okay, that shouldn't have been in there. <laughs> I also forgot to mention that you can move these around. So if you want your, say, your direct effects at the bottom, you can do that. You can uh, just move them where you'd like. And then also changing the color is as easy as, like I mentioned, going into editing roles. Um, you can add different sub roles, which is kind of nice, but then changing the color via this panel. And it gives you only, Apple gives you only like these muted earth tones, which I wish that they would make it so it's uh, whatever color you choose but oh well. Let's listen to this last sequence, just the effects. So we have the risers building because it's coming up to this end point. It's coming up to the, uh, the title here. So we have the drone in the background. We have risers, two risers, and then a hit that accentuates that. So that sounds pretty good. And then if you add the other stuff as well, so let me just listen, we'll listen to this first. He didn't even breathe there, <laughs> but it, it works. And the breathing out, but all together. It has impact for sure. So kind of summing up everything, imagine you're there in the scene, what would you hear directly in front of you? What would you hear around you being ambient sound effects? Would you hear wind? Would you hear cars, traffic, birds? And then also add effects. So add risers and hits in between your shots. Add some type of drone or high-pitched noise in the background to give a certain mood so your viewer feels a certain way because of your audio. Change your project to surround sound so that you can change the pan modes of different sound effects. You can animate them so they sound like they're coming from specific locations when you're listening to, uh, to the film in your headphones or in speakers. And then with layering, make sure you start at a lower level, negative 10 or negative 12. And then when you need to, you can raise sound effects to help them stand out more than the others. And the last thing I have for you is just get creative with your sound effects. So you don't have to find a sound effects that's spot on with what's going on in the video. Just, just work with what you have in your sound effects library and see if it would work. And you'd be surprised how many times it does when it's totally off brand with what's going on in the video. And if you've stuck around this long, thank you so much. I appreciate your support. I hope I went over everything that I needed to. There may ha be things that I know later when I'm editing. I will wish I had said, but oh well, I'm only human. But thank you for your support and I will see you guys in the next video.